Hey guys, I got a little problem today. I got a 2003 Ford Taurus and it has a 12-valve engine in it and it's got a rough idle, a pretty rough idle, but it's nothing to throw a check engine like necessarily. Uh, it may eventually, um, but they brought it in fast enough or whatever that uh, it didn't have time to set the check engine light. Now they've been to a couple other shops and they've thrown all kinds of parts at it when that didn't fix it. You know, I threw coil packs at it, all kinds of uh, stuff like that. And when that didn't fix, they said, ah, oh, it needs a cam sensor and synchronizer, which are common enough on here uh, for noise issues. And uh, But if they're so bad that they're so walled out on there that they'll um, cause it noise issue, they usually have a PO340 with them, some kind of cam sensor uh, uh, code with them. So they sent it down the road, so they finally came to the dealership here. And we do have better tools, but uh, just cranking this one, you can tell it's got a compression issue. I don't need a scan tool. I don't need a Ford fancy scan tool. I don't. I just need to have a little bit of experience in uh, drivability to tell you this thing has a compression issue, causing the uh, uh, rough idle. And I had a 24 valve uh, dock engine in a Taurus that had a. Uh, problems with compression also and that one gave me more of a rough idle than necessarily a uh, uh, driving misfire surging issue so I'll show you what this sounds like before we get into it here um, what I did do is I did a relative compression on our scan tool which is really cool how they even get a, a, a gauge out and I can uh, just crank the engine and I can see what kind of compression we got and it's all relative to each other's cylinder and usually they come out you know zero all the way across the board and it's it's a very accurate tool so if we have one two percent down compared to the other ones they're all saying zero and like uh, five is five two it's getting a little closer to three and four and we're getting a little worried but uh, this one is one that flagged also and this one I would flag also that um, you know has five four five six percent down there's an issue so without even having this fancy stuff to do it for us and uh, you know test the crankshaft speed we can do it ourselves just by listening so I'm gonna put you out here and hopefully you can listen over the radio and stuff and uh, hear how this sounds where it's inconsistent cranking and uh, we'll do that right now once I find the keys and you can hear it Now hopefully you're able to hear that. This one isn't really bad where it's like da -da 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 -da. you know that, that's how some of these really sound. It's like whoa what's going on under the hood. This one you could feel it more than anything but you can definitely hear that cranking is not consistent um, throughout the time period we're, we're, we're cranking. So we definitely know there's a compression issue um, causing the misfire and we need to go after it and not just start throwing secondary ignition or fuel injectors after it. And we need to fix the compression issue first, no matter what, if there is, you know, this thing has 120,000 miles on it. Yeah, it could have a, you know, it's got original plugs and wires on it. Yeah, it could have secondary ignition issues, um, you know, failing under any kind of loads. But uh, if we have a inconsistent crank like that, we already know without pulling a uh, gauge out, um, that we got a compression issue. So we need to go after that first because it will never uh, fully cure anything until you have proper compression in the cylinder. Now another thing we have is um, we have access to a, a thing called power balance which is all relative to the other cylinder, same thing as the relative compression. And uh, basically what you want to see is this, slight variances, you're right around the zero mark, you know, right here you can see we're right around the zero mark and then you can see these ones are obviously this is a histogram part but this one's current and uh, it, there's obviously an issue this one and this one just look at the look at the graph and you could tell very easily which one is uh, uh got a lot less power than the other cylinder which would cause the rough idle and of course uh eventually a misfire code for that cylinder so it's just not performing the same as the rest now usually when there's a dead miss, there's a deep V in here. I mean way down here. But these ones are just uh, 
like partial misfires and that's why it's causing the rough idle. And what I'm going to demonstrate today is how to do an air test um, to make sure that these valves are sealing properly. I don't like to do um, combustion leak tests um, with, with an actual leak down tester. I don't think they're accurate and I've never found a need for them once I've done this test, this air test. You'll know if it's coming out um, one of three ways. The intake valve's leaking, the exhaust valve's leaking, or you got major blow by the um, rings in the uh, cylinder there. And you know you got ring issues because you'll hear it up through the crankcase here. When it vents out, you'll hear a lot of uh, air coming out. So what you're gonna need is a, they're usually part of a compression tester kit, and it has the adapter for the threads so it can go into the um, screw into the head and it's got the o-ring on it and the other end you put your uh, your shop air so you just gotta match up the threads like this one you can see those two and then you simply screw it into here now we already know we have a compression issue because it has that odd sound um, not consistent sound when we're cranking the engines. We already know we have a compression issue and uh, that's why I had the valve cover off because getting this uh, to top dead center is not always easy without the valve covers off so it's not always perfect so you're kind of guessing and uh, this is a great first step to inspect the valve springs in the first place and the push rods are being, being bent um, all kinds of problems you can inspect just by pulling a simple valve cover and in doing so we're going to loosen these rockers so that these valves valve stems can seat in there absolutely perfect with, with full spring pressure and we'll know if we have a leak um, from intake or exhaust for sure whereas otherwise we're guessing I don't like that so we're going to screw in this tester until it bottoms out, make sure a little Schrader valve that's usually at the end of that for compression testing is out. And then we're just going to apply shop air to this side with the adapter. Now, before we do that, we're going to loosen or remove these uh, rocker arms so that these um, valve stems can fully seat for sure. I prefer to take them off. You may, may not feel comfortable. I'd rather take them off and uh, I just put them in order here. And I'll show you why here in a second. That there, the uh, push rods can stay. Now, just to be sure, these are fully seated. A lot of guys will take rubber mallet like this and they'll tap on them, you know, directly on. Like that. And then it'll just go down and back up uh, uh, very softly. So you know that they're fully seated in there. After that, all I gotta do is uh, apply shop air to the hose here. And then we listen. We definitely have a leak. It's very obvious. So what you do is you have this going and then you go back to the exhaust pipe. Something like this. Wet finger. Probably can't see it. And you put it just underneath it and you'll be able to tell if there's you know a good amount of airflow coming out of there. Because you'll feel it get cold obviously. Compared to not being in there. And that's the way you check the exhaust. You can stick your ear up in there also but I like the wet finger test. You can really feel the cold air uh, coming across your finger then. Back up in front of the engine here, we could definitely hear the leak. Um, it sounds like it could be coming from uh, the crankcase, right? It's right in this area. What you can do is find a large port on the intake, like a vacuum port or a big port for the PCV, like this one.
I'll let you listen. I might pull it off. Definite large leak intake valve. So, like I said, it's that easy. We now know it's the intake side. Again, no leak down tester needed. Um, this one had a little bit of a compression loss on five. I'm sure it's heading the same direction as um, six with the valve seat being the issue and the valve stem itself um, where the face meets the seat of the valve. So in order to make sure we don't have other issues like an overheat that caused a, a head gasket issue where they're, they're crossing pads in there, what we can do is pull the spark plug on number five and do our wet finger test once again. Make sure there's no air coming out of there. And there isn't. 